Did you know that BDSM and kink are healthy outlets for aggression, imagination, and attention? Hi, welcome to The Partition, home of kinky wellness. My name is Dana Shergel, and I am a sexual wellness instructor that dives deep into all things kinky. I'm here to show why kinky sexual wellness deserves a rightful spot within the wellness conversation. So let's talk about it. Hey, and welcome back. Last week, I talked about the Netflix documentary Orgasm Inc., the story of one taste, and how I felt that the documentary was presented as unbiased information, but when I was watching it, I felt that it was actually quite edited to be biased towards discrediting some of the rituals and things within the own practice. At the end of the last episode, I challenged the idea that we shouldn't unleash our inner beast. I actually think the opposite. I think we need to reestablish a healthy relationship with our inner beast. I will also touch on why you need to welcome other people's beasts into your life too. But let's start with why you need to reestablish a healthy relationship with your inner beast. At this point, we know that BDSM and kink are healthy aggressions for AIA. Aggression, imagination, and attention. In this context, let's think of our beast as our aggression. When you need to protect yourself, you want your beastly side to come out, not your soft and sensitive side. That's your aggressive side's job. Aggression, or our inner beast, is there to protect us. Remember, aggression is what fuels our sense of ownership, courage, and resilience. Without these qualities driven by aggression, self-development would not be possible. The two most common ways most people ignore the fact they have aggression within themselves is, one, they ignore their aggressive beast until it gets out of control and overtakes their life by being self-destructive. Two, They bury their aggressive or their beast so far within themselves that they forget they even have a beast. People who forget they have a beast inside of them are only one half of the potential they could be. They need to increase the skills driven by aggression and that beast within themselves can do that. Whether this aggression is being buried in self-destructive thoughts or maybe the people around them are making you believe that you don't have aggression or it's been beaten outside of you, It's very deep within the core of you, and it's going to take some time for it to come back out, depending on how far you've pushed it down. And that's why I want to advocate for an environment and a place that you can consentingly and ethically rebuild that relationship within yourself. BDSM and kink allow you to rein in your aggression and tame your beast in healthy and holistic ways. I said it before, and I'll say it again. I do believe we're living in a culture that's trying its absolute best to extinguish the fact that we all have aggression. People can barely stand up for themselves anymore. And then they beat themselves up over it because deep down inside, we all know when we are doing wrong to ourselves. We know when we don't stand up for ourselves. We can feel it. I know it because I feel it too. It's a human thing. We know when we do ourselves dirty. No one loves that feeling you have when you just got walked over on. Because you couldn't use that beast inside of you, even at 10%, even at 10%, just to stand your boundaries and say no to whatever was making you feel uncomfortable. And that frustration, it builds up. Maybe it's your boss that's pushing your boundary. Maybe it's your family, your friends. You know, it's often the ones that are closest to us that seem to do the most damage when it comes to pushing our boundaries. But did you know learning how to use our aggression in appropriate ways is supposed to happen during our childhood? During childhood development, obviously children and parents are going to meet at some point with friction because children are not supposed to always want to do what their parents say. But in my case, I had almost no supervision. Discipline was never enforced and there was no such thing as structure. So I never got an opportunity to truly learn how to handle aggression properly. It was all over the place because I didn't know how to handle myself when I got mad. No one showed me how to do that. So as an adult, it became increasingly important for me to have a space to be mad or aggressive as it was to have a space for me to be sad or a space for me to think. And sometimes these spaces overlap. Pretending you don't have aggression or a beast inside of you won't make it go away. It's there. It's going to be there. It's always going to stay there. And it really does want to help you. I know meeting our aggressive side might be scary at first, but in the long run, it wants you to be able to stand up for yourself. It wants you to be able to hold your boundaries, and it wants you to gain your sense of self-ownership. Plus, you want a healthy relationship with your aggressive side. You want it because you should want to be with someone else who has a healthy relationship with their aggressive side, you know? Don't think that you're the only one with an animal inside you. 
We are all animals. So welcoming someone else's beast into your life is what you're going to need to do if you truly and deeply want to connect with someone. Now, I'm not saying welcome all beasts and, you know, be this like running hotel of all these beasts. I'm not saying that. Just handle the one that you can handle. You know, you have to be able to handle it. We're not always going to be able to handle everybody's beast. That's important. Just as you're not good for everyone and, and everyone's not good for you, not all your beasts are going to be good for other people and you're not good for everybody else's beast. You know, I shared this poem on my Instagram a long time ago by a woman named Stephanie Bennett Henry. And I'm going to read it right now because it's absolutely cute. So it says, fall in love with someone's dark side. Find the ugliest parts, the danger that works inside when no one is watching. Get deep down to the bottom of their soul where you feel as though you've seen hell and love the hell out of that person. Because if you fall for someone's light before you've stood alone in their dark, then you're only loving the person they show you, and that's not real. Wow. I love it. Do you love it? I love it. It's so true. You need to love the dark and the light inside your person. And, you know, you deserve it, and I deserve it. Everyone, we all deserve someone who can handle our darker sides. And most of the time, our beasts are just simply misunderstood. Sometimes they really just want to come out and play. In the documentary, one of the people being interviewed said, we're in this place now where women can protect themselves, are self-sufficient, and are providing for themselves. And ask the question, what can men do? And he said that women want someone to meet them as an equal and are ready to play. And I absolutely agree with this. But I think it's everyone that wants to play, not just women. Men and women, everybody in between, everybody wants to just play. That's what we all want. But all of this starts with you and how you view your beast. If you're scared of it or upset with it or have lost control of it, it can be easy to dismiss this and pretend like it's not a problem. But until you start paying attention and start loving your beast and gaining a balanced relationship with your aggression, you're never going to reach that self-love depth that involves loving the, quote, not nice or beautiful parts of yourself. In order for you to have someone love you and your beast and be with you, who's willing to work with you to better those parts of yourself, to release those parts of yourself, you need to love it first. And you do want this from your partner. Like I said, you want a partner to be in a healthy relationship with their aggression and have a grip on their beast. It's a two-way street. Also, I did a little follow-up on Orgasmic Inc. and Netflix. So it seems like own meditation was doing pretty good until June 2018 when the Bloomberg Business Week published an article about how the employees and consultants were being pressured to take really expensive courses and programs and retreats that apparently drove them into debt that later spiraled with the FBI getting involved. So when I was researching this, this one was a little bit annoying because it seemed like everyone was blaming another person with how they spent their money. And I think that adults have a really hard time when it comes to saying no, especially when we have things like credit cards. Because if you took the trip, you took the trip. And when you pair that up with some of the things that the people in the interview were saying that they wanted to go and they wanted to do those things, and I think that's a little closer to the truth than them not actually really wanting to go. But the article by Bloomberg gathered a lot of attention from almost everyone, from everyday people all the way up to the FBI, who then opened a probe into one taste for prostitution, sex trafficking, and violations of labor law. Now, when it comes to any of those things, I do agree that something needs to get looked into if there are instances of power abuse between employers and employees. But it's weird that they released a movie last year about a probe that was opened in 2018. They still don't have any charges. And the evidence on the case is all over the place. And in my opinion, the movie was edited so a negative feeling would pop up with all that creepy music and creepy edits. But that's the thing. That might be that way because I found some other things that the Netflix documentary didn't show at the end of the credits. I found that a group of 15 people that were formerly associated with One Taste filed a lawsuit against Netflix. The suit was filed after a group of more than 400 people, currently or formerly affiliated with One Taste, sent a petition to Netflix in September demanding privacy and protection. The petition was sent over on September 6th and asked for a response within 48 hours from Netflix, but Netflix didn't give an answer. 
In the petition, it outlines that Netflix producers unlawfully purchase the footage that contains personal material over the years during the mid-2000s to 2016. The material that was sold to Netflix was done by a former One Taste employee to a Netflix producer for money without knowledge, permission, or consent. The petition goes on to say that this is a criminal act and vicious and atrocious and wholly invasive violation of our privacies is absolutely unconstitutional. The petition goes on to say that this is a criminal act and vicious, atrocious, and wholly invasive violation of our privacies is absolutely unconsolable and must be rectified immediately. The petition also says that the images Netflix purchased were being misappropriated. But at the end of the day, the judge they received denied their request and let Netflix use the images how Netflix wanted. If that doesn't scream violation to you, then I don't know what does. I actually feel bad for the people that were being interviewed for this movie because I don't actually believe that they thought the information was going to be used in this perspective and to give this narrative that is so far from what their actual perspective and experience was like. Unfortunately, there are people who want to keep spreading misconceptions about BDSM and kink, and unfortunately, BDSM and kink will always attract unethical and predatory people. Stories of people abusing their power and taking things too far will always pop up, so it's easy to villainize BDSM and kink and people who partake in it. But I'm here to tell you that's just one narrative that they want you to think. There are so many other beautiful people within the space that are open-minded, open-hearted, and are looking to help. Get to know your beast. And if you're with a partner, get to know their beast too. If you're considering using BDSM and kink as your creative outlet for this, make sure you know your basics. If you don't know your basics, check out my e-learning at www.thepartition.life where I make it easy to understand the basics of BDSM and kink. Thank you for listening to me talk about why we need to release our beasts and why you need to welcome beasts and others, as well as the updated information I found out about Orgasmic Inc. and Netflix. I've included the NBC News link in the description, as well as the petition from the people at One Taste. Thank you again for listening. Tune in next week, and as always, stay kinky.